Good morning, everybody. Uh, I, I usually tell people you can't appreciate a, a good, cool drink of water until you think about in the summer. I bet some of you've been in a hay field and you know working hard in the summer, and you get that cool drink of water. Isn't it great? Well, I think we take a lot of things for granted, and uh, it's gotten cold the past few days, so we can certainly appreciate that heat that comes through the vent and the electricity that we have. Uh, I don't know that we're soft, but boy, we get spoiled, don't we? And uh, so if we've had water, if we've had heat for the past few days, I think it's a really a blessing because a lot of people don't have that. Uh, good to see everybody this morning, and I want to encourage everyone to take a prayer list on your way out. They're back there in the foyer. We still have a lot of names. We've got a lot of folks that are hurting, uh, that have sickness going on. We have a lot of folks uh, that have lost loved ones uh, over the past few weeks. There's two that I'd like to mention. Uh, Tony Stowers, who's a minister in DeQueen, is in St. Michael's. He's very ill, and we need to remember him in our prayers. And uh, Larry and Susan Lewis's daughter, April Leslie, uh, is dealing with the COVID and some other issues. So uh, there's lots of folks that we need to remember in our prayers. 
If you would, would you go to our Heavenly Father in prayer? Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning thanking you for this special day, this first day of the week, where we as Christians and Christians all around the world can gather to worship you and thank you for all that you do for us and to recognize that great sacrifice that Christ made on our behalf and his willingness to, to go to the cross for us. Lord, you, you bless us in, in so many ways and and, and just for the, the many things to have food and shelter and uh, as we see your majesty in the world uh, with the beautiful snow that you bring and the changing of the seasons, uh, we see how powerful you are and, and we need to recognize that, that you're in control. And uh, we always need to lean on you and thank you for everything, every good blessing that we have. Heavenly Father, uh, this morning, I'd like to ask that you be with our nation, uh, with our leaders nationally and locally, and we just pray that, that people could get along, that they'd make good choices, good decisions, that they would lean on you and that you would guide them in the things that they do. This morning, we come to you asking you to take care of the many folks that are hurting in our church family and our own families from sickness, uh, with health concerns. We know that uh, you'll be there for them. We pray that they have faith in you and that you'd be with those doctors and those nurses, the uh, people that are caring for them on a regular basis. And we do thank you for those special folks that are able to assist us medically and for our local uh, police and uh, even those that are serving in the military throughout the world, please be with them and watch over them and be with their families that they're separated from, that they wouldn't be worried about them. Our Heavenly Father, we ask that you be with us in our service this morning, that uh, we'll give you the glory and praise that you so deserve. Please watch over us, forgive us of our sins. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. What a joy it is to be together. To those watching online today, thank you so much for being with us today at the Walnut Church of Christ. I pray that this finds you and your family safe. I pray that you had a, a safe week and a warm week. And uh, well, even though we had what a winter storm, right? Uh, we are still so blessed in this part of the country to not have it as bad as other places as far as uh, losing water and electricity. I know some around here uh, experience that, and uh, if you did, I hope that uh, all of that has come back to you now. Now we just wait for gasoline and other necessities in the grocery stores, but we know uh, that that will come soon. But what a joy it is to be able to be together and have this time uh, to study the Word of God together. If, in your Bibles, turn to Proverbs chapter 9. We uh, we're going to continue our series today that we're calling Proverbs for Living. When you look in Scripture, there are five books in the Bible known as wisdom literature, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and Song of Solomon. We've already heard a passage of Scripture this morning from Job. What a rich book in the Bible. And I love there in Job 28 where the scripture says God alone understands the way to wisdom. He knows where it can be found. And what Solomon is doing as he's sitting down and having this conversation with his sons, he wants them to realize not only can you choose to walk in the path of God's wisdom, but there's also a counterpart wisdom to that known as folly and so today as we read through Proverbs chapter 9 you're going to see Solomon explaining to his sons and giving them the invitation of wisdom and folly because every day of our life we have a choice to make and that choice is will we choose to walk in the ways of God one of the things that wisdom literature teaches us 
is it helps us understand and it helps us find the meaning of life itself. Now, there's so many things around us today in our world that wants us to try to zoom in on and try to find meaning. And then we turn to God's Word and we begin to realize what a difference. The difference that God pictures for us versus what the world has for us. And so I want you to see that this morning as we see this invitation of both wisdom and folly. Now, one of the things that Solomon will do in Proverbs 9 is this. He will picture wisdom and folly as being portrayed in this chapter as rival young women. And so I've titled this message, A Tale of Two Women, because that's really what it does. It describes wisdom as well as the counterpart being folly. And each one, wisdom and folly both, they prepare a feast and they invite people to come participate in it. And you're going to see the difference that they make. And so let's, let's see this passage in Proverbs 9. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her maids, and she calls from the highest point of the city. Let all who are simple come in here. She says to those who lack judgment, Come eat my food and drink the wine that I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and you will live. Walk in the way of understanding. Whoever corrects a mocker invites insult. Whoever rebukes a wicked man incures abuse. Do not rebuke a mocker or he will hate you. Rebuke a wise man and he will love you. Instruct a wise man, and he will be wiser still. Teach a righteous man, and he will add to his learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. For through me, your days will be many, and years will be added to your life. If you are wise... Your wisdom will reward you. If you are a mocker, you alone will suffer. Now notice the difference. The woman folly is loud. She is undisciplined, without knowledge. She sits at the door of her house on a seat at the highest point of the city, calling out to those who pass by, who go straight on their way. Let all who are simple come in here, she says to those who lack judgment. Stolen water is sweet. Food eaten in secret is delicious. But little do they know the dead are there, that her guests are in the depths of the grave. That's pretty strong language starting there in verse 13. I mean, you notice the difference from verses 1 through 12, it's just this beautiful feast that we are invited to partake and to participate in. And then the difference is the woman of folly is very loud. And what she has to offer, and this is the thing that we need to understand about folly. Folly always leads to destruction. Wisdom always leads to a better life with Almighty God. Notice what Solomon says here at the very beginning of this chapter. Wisdom dwells in a house, not a tent. A house is to be sturdy. A tent is something temporary. It can be picked up and it can be moved from place to place. But the way that he describes wisdom here, the house has a foundation. And he talks about from seven pillars and the construction that takes place there. Now, one of the things we know about pillars, they're strong and they're sturdy, and they help leave that foundation to be intact, right? Well, you also understand this, that the number seven in Scripture represents completeness. 
it represents that of being full. And so I think it's Solomon's way here at the very beginning of this chapter to help us realize that if you follow the ways of God and if you follow his wisdom, your life will be full. Now, let me show you in John chapter 10, starting in verse 10. This is not on the screen this morning, but I want you to hear how Jesus describes this. He says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Satan always wants to do those three things in our life. He wants to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus comes along, and what he has to offer us is the full meal deal. It is everything there. It's complete, and it's good for us to partake of. And so Solomon wants his sons to know there's a big difference in wisdom and in folly. Now, I love verse 3 in the Passion Translation. That, that may be a new translation for some of you, but I want you to go home this week and read uh, out of it. The Passion Translation says this in verse 3 of Proverbs 9. She, talking about wisdom, is inviting everyone to come and eat until they're full. I want you to think about that when you sit down to a meal. Man, we are spoiled when it comes to eating, right? And we eat in such a way that we typically will not get up and leave until we are full. Sometimes when we get up and leave that meal, we've eaten too much, haven't we? We feel stuffed. We just feel kind of I'm just going to say it, kind of bloated, right? Well, that's what happens when you eat too much. But when you eat what is right and you eat what is good and healthy, it's full and it's satisfying. But when you take part of something that's destructive, there comes a time where you're, you're eating it and you're partaking of it and it looks good and it feels good and it tastes good only to realize later on it was destructive. We know that. Maybe some of us in this room today have experienced things in our life where we made some terrible choices. But aren't we glad that we serve a God of second chances? A God that seeks to restore us and forgive us and redeem us, buy us back and put us back on the path where he wants us to live in the first place. Hear this today. Wisdom is this confident inviter. Now there's something about verse 3 that really stuck out with me this week. This is a simple sentence and one that you might not think holds much meaning, but you think about this. When you invite someone into your space, when you invite someone into your area of life, you do that because you're comfortable with that person, right? And, and you've invited them into your home, into your space, because you're confident that when you're with them, it's going to be okay. It's going to be good. And so what Solomon says here, that wisdom is a confident inviter. Wisdom offers everyone something of value. And so think about it like this. When you hang out with wisdom, you can be confident that you have something valuable surrounding you. It's not something temporary but it's something valuable, it's something sturdy, it's something that will last. Don't let anything become more important in your life than your search for God's wisdom. Man, people in our world today, they're searching for all kinds of things, especially right now when things seem so out of control. 
I mean, the one constant that we do have in our life is we can always go to Almighty God, right? And, and we've learned that even if we can't come here in this room, in the comfort of our home, if that's where it has to be sometimes, we can still find God. God is everywhere. Now, I want you to hear me this morning. There is something to be said about coming together in community and living together and doing life with one another. That's what holds us accountable, and that's what helps us on this trek of choosing wisdom versus that of folly. Listen to what the message version says in Proverbs chapter 9, starting in verse 4. He says, are you confused about life? Don't know what's going on? Come with me. Oh, come, have dinner with me. I've prepared a wonderful spread, fresh-baked bread, roast lamb, carefully selected wines. Leave your impoverished confusion and live. Walk up the street to a life with meaning. And when you continue to, to go down through this passage, I really love verse 10 because this is really the meaning of all of it. The starting point for acquiring wisdom is this. We stand in awe of the holiness of God. We stand in awe of who God really is. And verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Now, that doesn't mean that you're scared of God. That means that you stand in such awe of Him that you want to walk in His ways, that you want to walk and participate in the holiness of God. Nowhere in Scripture other than this will you see where God will say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. You never see in Scripture where it says love, 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 or joy, 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 or you choose the word, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So, as Solomon would say in verse 12, it is to your advantage to be wise. It is to your advantage to walk in the path of God's wisdom and not that of folly. If you look, starting in verse 13, the signs of foolishness are loud. Is that not true in everyday life, even today? The way that Satan works and the way that Satan presents things to us, he loves to do it in a loud way, doesn't he? And he loves to picture it that it's good, that it's pleasant, that it's beautiful, that it's fulfilling. He loves to paint that picture. But what we see here of folly, it's undisciplined, it's without knowledge. She sits at the door of her house on a seat at the highest point of the city, calling out in a loud voice to those who pass by. You know why she does that? It's enticing. And it's inviting. And all too many times we fall to that, don't we? And we think that it looks good, and we want to be a part of that. And this whole time, God has his way over here. And he's crying out to us, walk with me. Walk in my ways. Because when you walk in the ways of God, it leads to everlasting life. Versus that of folly that leads to destruction. Now, you can look at this scripture and you can see this. Wisdom and foolish both offer signs. So when we're faced with life choices, what we have to do, we have to live a disciplined life, and we've got to open our eyes 
so we can see the signs and let our ears hear what the invitation is really saying so we can discern, is this the way of God or is it the way of folly? What a difference that choice will really make. You notice there in Proverbs 9, verse 17, the counterpart folly says this, stolen water is sweet and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. And so in her words, you find two lies. The first one is stolen water is sweet and that second lie is the idea that bread eaten in secret is pleasant. Now, I want you to write this down or mark this in your Bibles. I want you to look in Proverbs chapter 5, verse 15. Here's another way that Solomon will say this. He'll say, drink water from your own cistern and running water from your own well. In other words, you drink and you eat and you partake of what's yours. Don't go seeking for it anywhere else because when you do, it is not going to be good and it's sure not going to be pleasant. And so let me give you as we close this morning some things that you might ask yourself when you're choosing the difference between wisdom and folly. First of all, when you walk into the door, will you leave full? And then second of all, what did the signs say? What did the signs really point to? And then I love this third one, am I really paying attention and wanting to live life God's way? Or am I just looking for fun? Am I just looking for a good time? I don't know who ever said that you can't be a Christian and have fun. That is the biggest lie that we have been told. You can be a child of God and you can have fun. And you can be a child of God and as Jesus would say, you can live life to the full. What will you choose? Will you choose to walk in the way of wisdom and choose God's way? Or will you choose the counterpart and walk with folly. So many people walking around today that are choosing the path of folly. And I'm thankful that we serve a gracious and a loving God that stands ready to welcome us back or to receive us for the first time to help us realize what life with Jesus can be all about. Let's think about that on this day and every day as we choose to follow him. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for how rich your word is. Father, we thank you for the depth that we see in your word and the life that you offer us, Father. Praise your name for that. And help us as your people to make wise decisions and help us to always choose to walk with you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. You are good, you are good, when there's nothing good in me. You are love, you are love. On display for all to see You are light, you are light When the darkness closes in You are hope, you are hope You have covered all my sin You are peace, you are peace When my fear is crippling You are true, you are true Even in my wandering You are joy, you are joy you're the reason that I sing. You are life, you are life. In you death has lost its sting. Oh, I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. The riches of your love will always be enough. Nothing compares to your Words
are Lord, you are Lord, all creation will proclaim, you are here, you are here, in your presence I may hold, you are God, you are God, of all else I'm letting go. prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper, I'll read just a small portion out of Psalms 22. I've always found a certain amount of irony in that we hold the 23rd Psalm so dear and close to our hearts and, I, in my opinion, unarguably the uh, most beautiful Psalm, and, but sitting right next to it, we have such a dark description of what Jesus went through. In Psalms 22, verse 16, My enemies surround me like a pack of dogs. An evil gang closes in on me, and they have pierced my hands and feet. I can count all my bones. My enemies stare at me and gloat. They divide my garments among themselves and throw dice for my clothing. And yet in stark contrast, John 3, 16, For this is how God loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Our most gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we humbly bow before your throne to give thanks for this bread, which to us as Christians represents that precious body that was, that was slain on the cross for our sins. And Father, it's our hope that we can partake of it in a manner that's pleasing to you and glorifying to your name. In your Son's most blessed name we pray. Amen. Our most loving and glorious Heavenly Father, we again bow before you to give thanks for this cup, which to us represents the blood that was poured out for our sins. And Father, again, it's our hope to partake of it in a manner that's glorifying to you. And it's in your Son's most blessed name we pray. Amen. Love. 